It's not just a place to go, it's more like coming home. Welcome home, oh, welcome home to Washington Square. The good old days of Indiana shopping malls. We've changed, they've changed. So what might be in store for this industry in transition? We get perspective from one of Indiana's retail experts. Plus, the Hoosier connection to pink salt, the Himalayas, and healing. This week's Business of Health coming to you from a cave. And <laughs> Purdue's magical season comes to a close in the national title game in Phoenix. Perhaps the outcome, not what Boiler fans had hoped, but still a slam dunk for the university. This is what we do. Inside Indiana Business is next. From Indiana's business news leader, this is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick. Presented by Elevate Ventures and Indiana University. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick coming to you this week from the Fashion Mall at Keystone on the north side of Indianapolis. Big changes are in the works at this longtime high-end shopping destination uh, here in Indianapolis. The Fashion Mall's owner, Simon Property Group, recently confirming the departure of Saks Fifth Avenue, which has long been a staple here. More than 20 years as one of the anchors of the Fashion Mall. The departure is part of a major redevelopment of this property to include a variety uh, of different shopping experiences with new retailers, dining, entertainment, and an outdoor plaza. It's representative of big changes taking place on the retail scene throughout Indiana. In downtown Indianapolis, Hendricks Commercial Properties is moving forward with its $600 million plan to reinvent Circle Center, gutting the traditional indoor mall and creating an open air experience with retail, entertainment, office, and housing. Think about this. You're going to have an expanded convention center and the Signia Hotel right next door to this all coming online about the same time. I think that's a tremendous alignment, and uh, as a result, we're going to see a lot of positive things happening in the core of downtown Indianapolis. That's longtime real estate executive Bill French, who tells me despite uh, the disruption, the change in the industry, the retail industry in central Indiana and around the state is surprisingly strong, but it is going to look different. Macy's recent announcement of plans to close 150 stores. Another example of retailers continuing to reinvent themselves in an industry in transition. And while news that Saks is exiting the fashion mall made headlines, it didn't come as a surprise to industry observers like Bill French. Well, there have been discussions about this in 2018 and 2019. This project just got shelved during 2020. And French says the move opens the door for a new retail experience. The Simon property folks have been just fantastic with all the innovation they've brought to the fashion mall over the years. Uh, with the Saks Fifth Avenue reworking area, I think we're going to see more experiential types of retail coming. Restaurants, we're going to see more specific operators like Levi's and or Gucci. But we'll also see some outdoor area that will be incorporated and possibly some office space included too. I think it'll dr drive a lot more volume in people and dollars through the fashion mall. I think it'd be very good for uh, everyone who shops there. In our central Indiana area, we're 95% occupied, which is just amazing. This is record height. Uh, we're seeing some of the suburbs, Avon, Brownsburg, Fishers, Zionsville, Carmel, with vacancy rates of maybe 2 or 3%. Uh, oftentimes, there will be a line forming, if you will, to uh, occupy vacant space. And while traditional malls are closing or being reimagined or repurposed around Indiana, French says statewide markets are seeing activity. South Bend, Mishawaka area has been very strong. Fort Wayne remains strong. I see a lot of growth in Fort Wayne in particular. Down on the south side where Jefferson Ridge is located in Jeffersonville in the Clarksville area, a lot of new construction and development has gone on there in the last couple of years. Uh, that uh, beltway, the 265 beltway that goes around has really made dramatic improvements. The mall business is, is strong if the mall's in the right location. French says another indicator of the strength of the retail market here in Indiana, bankruptcies. He says bankruptcies in the retail space among their lowest levels in say 10 to 15 years. 
As for the big project here at the Fashion Mall at Keystone, at Timeline, Saks expected to leave this property uh, sometime in the summer months, and then the big revamp of that space on the southeast side of the Fashion Mall expected to be complete with the first stores coming online in 2026. As for me, I'm headed to I-69 right now, headed south to Evansville and the very first edition of our Engage Indiana series. IBJ Media and Inside Indiana Business will this year host events in nine regions around the state, engaging business and community leaders on important business issues and economic challenges in their regions. We expect a crowd of well over 300 community leaders in Indiana's third largest city, and we will have a complete report on our visit to Evansville and the scoop on what's happening in Southwest Indiana on next week's show. So I'll see you next week. For now, I'm sending it back to the studio and Mary Rachel Redmond, who has the rest of this week's show. Mary Rachel. Thanks, Gary. Well, great perspective on what could be in store for Indiana malls. We have a lot of other business news to get you caught up on around the state, including a look back on the economic impact of the celestial event of the century. Did Indiana cash in on the eclipse like we expected? We'll find out what unfolded when we come back. Here's what's making news around Indiana. Brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors. Indiana's 21,000 Realtors. The neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. Well, we begin this week with somewhat of a shocker in Tippecanoe County. Skywater Technology scrapping plans to build a nearly $2 billion semiconductor facility at Purdue University's Discovery Park District in West Lafayette. The project had been expected to create 750 jobs and was dependent on funding from the federal government's CHIPS initiative. But Skywater did not secure that money. Finally, a follow-up on the economic impact of the total solar eclipse in Indiana. A lot of planning, hype, and anticipation for the celestial event of the century. Much of Indiana in the path of totality. Here now, a look at how the weather played a major role in thrusting central Indiana as ground zero for viewing. Oh, it's starting to peak out again. Clouds in Texas and mostly clear skies in the Midwest drew hundreds of thousands of stargazers and big-time news media outlets to Indiana to take in this once-in-a-lifetime celestial experience. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway serving as the greatest spectacle in eclipse viewing. We are in a sea of strangers right now who are united by this moment to look up at the heavens. From NBC nightly news anchor Lester Holt and the Weather Channel's Jim Cantor anchoring eclipse coverage from Indiana, IMS was the place to be. We're in it. Oh baby, we are in it right now. Look at that. Oh. Wow. Wow. Yo, Diamond. Woo! Boom! Wow. Wow, what a show. Good job, Nature. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that show. Some wanted to cherish the galactic moment at home in their own Hoosier yards. Three, two, one! Nature's celestial show of the century in the galaxy over Hoosier skies. A big time payoff for not just central Indiana, but smaller Hoosier cities and towns like Vincennes. We talked to people literally from all over the country and all over the world who either had planned on coming here on, you know, from the get go or who had to make a pivot because of the weather in the southern and northern parts of the path. So we had folks that were like, I'm from L.A. I was supposed to be in Texas. I came here. Had I paid more attention, I would have came in three days earlier because this is such a great town and you guys put on such a great event. And the potential payoff for Indiana cities like Vincennes? It was a different demographic. We noticed kind of a younger one and also an older one of folks who are willing to travel and maybe have that you know disposable income to do so. And then a younger crowd that maybe we reached through our social media that came here out of curiosity and out of excitement. We heard a lot of folks who said, I want to come back for Memorial Day. I want to come back for the rendezvous weekend. I want to see what else this town has to offer. Something so far away, bringing humans so close together. Definitely a day to remember. An event that could shine the light on what's next for Indiana's economy. 
truly an incredible event. So what did this solar eclipse mean, I guess, in terms of air travel? The Indianapolis International Airport judging a 40% jump in passengers flying into and out of Indy. And up next, the healing power of salt caves right here in Indiana. A new salt cave in Carmel is helping not just Hoosiers breathe better, people are coming from around the country to check it out. That's coming up in the Business of Health. You're looking at pink salt being processed halfway around the world. The Himalayan region in Pakistan, the salt's potential health benefits now available in central Indiana. Hoosiers are coming from all over Indiana to breathe in the health benefits of a salt cave, which opened just weeks ago in Carmel. Kylie Valletta, you join us now here with more on this incredible story. Right. Salt Cave it sounds a little unusual, right? But visiting salt caves to help with breathing issues began centuries ago in Eastern Europe. Those were natural caves, but salt caves were brought to the U.S. about 20 years ago with man-made versions, or woman-made, in this case, at the new Carmel Salt Caves and Spa. It's 300 million years old, so you got to stop and think about that, 300 million years. Sky Winslow's health journey, including a difficult recovery from brain surgery, was a long road that led her to a cave. <laughs> You're going to be here for an hour, so just as you are in here, just consciously breathe in and breathe out. Salt caves use what's called halotherapy, an alternative treatment for respiratory conditions such as COPD, asthma, sinusitis, and allergies. Carmel Salt Caves and Spa has two salt caves, a total of 22 tons of pink Himalayan salt from floor to ceiling and even in the air. Heat and pot, and this is pharmaceutical grade. It goes up here in something called a halo generator. And then we just start her. Special machinery grinds salt into tiny particles that are circulated in the room. We pump in pharmaceutical grade salt through something called a halo generator and it mists around the room and when you breathe that in these microparticles go down and they thin out mucus and calms inflammation. Almost immediately if you're having breathing problems you'll, you'll feel it right away. As the salt particles thin mucus it's easier to clear congestion. An approved therapy for most health savings accounts the treatment is a natural alternative to taking medicine. We hear that a lot. People come in here all the time because they don't want to have medication again. They want to have the natural therapies. And what's more natural than breathing and salt? The historical home was taken all the way down to its bones for a major remodel. And 22 tons of salt shipped from Pakistan to Indiana, making the caves among the largest in the country. While there are others in the state, Winslow says the Carmel Salt Caves are different because she partnered with Dr. Margaret Smikowski, the Polish doctor and widely known expert who introduced salt caves to the U.S. I think her being involved with our caves not only makes it um, legitimate, um, it's, it makes it correct. We want everything to be perfectly just perfect for you when you walk in so that in the 45 minutes that you're breathing in the salt, it makes a difference in your life. Having the right person doing that, like Margaret, is a big deal. If visitors want more holistic healing, they can also do a foot spa detox, which Winslow says helps release heavy metals from the body. The foot spa is outrageously popular. You come in there and you put your feet into warm water and we put an electrical array in there and you're, tired, you're grounded to it. In 30 minutes time, lots of things come out of the body and our chairs also have something called far infrared mats. So when you sit on these mats, it's taking the pain out of your body. It has tourmaline and jade, it makes you just feel really good. Winslow says visitors are coming from all over Indiana and out of state because they see it as an experience. Well, thanks for coming in today. The Salt Cave Session and Foot Spa are $45 each, or both for $90. In two months' time, we have um, started making a profit. So we are doing very, very well, and most of our business is repeat business. So the therapies must be working because we're seeing a lot of returns in our clients. Trying to find answers during her own health battle, Winslow became a board-certified naturopathic doctor. 
and now also business owner on a mission for holistic health. The most rewarding part is always seeing, it almost makes me cry, um, seeing people get well because I had so many health issues. So for me, it's watching people leave here happy, feeling good. And you can tell she really feels her mission so deeply because she's battled some health problems herself. You had mentioned that. So ultimately, how did she find out about this in the first place? Well, she's added some personal touches. For instance, she made it wheelchair accessible because she, after her brain surgery, she was in a wheelchair for a while. So she recognizes how important that is. So you can access her salt caves also by a wheelchair. And one thing that has surprised her is how popular the foot spa is. It's been a really hot spot for like girl parties and we don't want to leave the men out. Men parties too, but parties. So she's having a great time. And I got to ask, I know you weren't there too long, uh -huh. but what was it like? It's very cool and super relaxing. I, I, it was nice. <laughs> I think I may need to check this out. Why not? <laughs> kind of obsessed. But Kylie, great stuff. Yep. As always, we'll be right back. Time now for our Eye on Education, brought to you by PNC Bank. One of the biggest challenges facing growth for Indiana's economy right now, educating and training the next generation of workers. More than 100 individuals and organizations across the state are answering the bell to address the issue. The group is called Cement's ILEV Indiana, and its goal is to develop a statewide modern youth apprenticeship program, which includes a three-year paid apprenticeship, a high school diploma, college credit, and industry credentials. There is been a long interest and in better, a long time interest in better connecting students with the workforce starting earlier on. Um, not only does that help them become aware of the available careers, but it's also a way to help retain them in our state. We want to retain our talent here and better meet the needs of employers who've long struggled um, to, you know, to fill roles that they have. You'll hear much more from Fairbanks Foundation President and CEO on the next Business and Beyond podcast presented by PNC. Now to the business of basketball and what Purdue University's run to the NCAA Men's Championship meant to the university. The last time a total solar eclipse came through Indiana was 1869, the same year Purdue University was founded. 100 years later in 1969, a Purdue graduate by the name of Neil Armstrong did this. One small step for man. One I am for 1969, also the last time the Boilermakers played in a national title game against another legendary Purdue alum by the name of John Wooden. Rick Mount with the ball. And Purdue leads two to nothing. Fast forward now to Monday, April 8th, 2024. On the same day, Indiana was at the heart of another total solar eclipse. Feed it to Gillis. Purdue played in the national championship. Steps in for two. One might just say the stars were aligned on this day for Matt Painter and this Purdue team to make a little history. Klingon, exclamation point with a lay. And despite losing to UConn, the boiler bottom line is this. At the end of the day, you move the bar in this program. How you operate, how you do things, and then what you did and what you accomplished. We had a chance to win a national championship, but you're going to look up there and, and see a runner-up national championship, but no one's going to look up there and say, I give my best. Keep your head up high. I appreciate what you guys have done for our program. If you keep coming like Matt Painter has, it's inevitable it's going to happen. I think that respect is going to allow him to have an easier time recruiting. It's going to allow the program to receive more NIL cash flow, which will also accelerate recruiting. So just what kind of attention did Purdue generate on their run to the title game? Well, let's just say it never hurts to be on the Kings radar. They're going to watch um, Purdue because it's that good. Or SNL. Okay. Charles, uh, can you break down the matchups for us? Well, I guess I don't get paid unless I do. So here we go. All right. Uh, him and him. Purdue's success on the national stage this March will undoubtedly help pave the way for the program's success in the future, especially as big time college sports enters an unprecedented era of NIL and the transfer portal. It's always pressure on coaching and the athletic department to produce a competitive program in the modern times of transfer portals. NIL money and social media. Uh, whether you like it or love it, it's the system that we have. And so, uh, you know, the Purdue way has always been to do things with excellence and the, the visibility and exposure will just be 
will be priceless. And the opportunities that will enable us to continue to provide for student athletes will really be something special. This team, something special indeed. They're going to take this to their grave. You were on that 2024 Final Four team. In some ways, they're, they're already legends, but I, I think this will be something that they'll, they'll carry with them the rest of their life. A great run for Purdue and not to get a little too uh, early about this, but Purdue already number six in the preseason rankings for next season. Well, that's a wrap for this week's Inside Indiana Business. Big show coming your way next week. Until then, enjoy some of the sights and sounds of this out of this world experience in Indiana last week. It's so cool. Okay. Everybody have your glasses on. Get your glasses, get your glasses. Everyone, get your glasses.